If a fire breaks out, you may be tempted to grab the nearest portable fire extinguisher to try and put it out. But before you do, make sure you know the following. Are you certain the fire is not too large to be put out with a portable fire extinguisher? Is the extinguisher you have the right type for that fire or the right size? And what is the proper sequence of steps to take when using a portable fire extinguisher? Unless you know the answer to all of these questions, you should not attempt to extinguish a fire. Otherwise, your actions could result in extensive property damage as well as personal injury or even death. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, regulates portable fire extinguisher use in the workplace. While fire extinguishers are addressed in many different sections of the OSHA regulations, the primary OSHA standards regarding fire extinguishers in construction are found in 1926.150 and the primary standards for general industry are found in 1910.157. When portable fire extinguishers are provided for employee use in the workplace, OSHA requires employers to provide their employees with an educational program covering the principles of fire extinguisher use. Employees must also be provided with information about the hazards associated with incipient or early stage firefighting. In addition, actual hands-on training in the use of fire extinguishers must be provided to those employees designated to use an extinguisher as part of their job, such as fire brigade members and fire watches. This tutorial covers considerations for selecting the proper fire extinguisher for the type of fire you are facing. It also explains the acronym PASS, which can help you remember the four sequential steps to operate a portable extinguisher. And we also discuss some do's and don'ts to remember any time you use a portable fire extinguisher. The first rule to remember is that portable fire extinguishers are not intended to be used for fighting large fires. They are intended only for use on what are known as incipient stage fires. Those are defined as a fire that is in its initial or beginning stage, can be handled safely with the portable extinguisher, and does not require the use of special personal protective equipment such as bunker gear or a respirator. When faced with a large fire, immediately evacuate the area and alert others. You should also evacuate the area any time you are not comfortable with using an extinguisher. There are many different types of portable fire extinguishers and using the wrong kind on a fire means you may not be able to extinguish it safely and effectively. For example, most everyone knows that oil and water don't mix, and that is the reason you would not want to use an extinguisher that sprays water on burning liquids that can actually make the flame spread. Some fire extinguishers are intended for use on a single type or class of fire material, while others are designed for use on a combination of two or more classes of fires. Just check the label on your extinguishers to know which type or types of fire they are intended to extinguish. Class A rated fire extinguishers will be marked with symbols similar to those pictured here. These extinguishers are suitable to use on ordinary combustible materials such as wood, paper or cardboard, dry vegetation, and some plastics. Basically, most anything that leaves an ash after it burns is a Class A fire material. Class A fire extinguishers often contain water that is sprayed on the fire. So again, as a reminder, do not use water to extinguish a flammable liquid fire, nor do you want to use water to extinguish an electrical fire for obvious reasons. Class B rated fire extinguishers will be marked with symbols similar to those pictured here. These extinguishers are suitable for use on fires involving flammable liquids such as gasoline and diesel, solvents, and oil or grease. CO2 extinguishers, which contain gaseous carbon dioxide, displace oxygen so the fire cannot continue to burn. These extinguishers are often used on Class B fire materials. 
While they are effective, the CO2 can displace the oxygen inside of a small enclosed space. So only use these extinguishers where there is plenty of natural ventilation. Also, the horn-shaped nozzle where the gas is discharged can become extremely cold. Cold enough to cause frostbite, in fact. So use caution when handling one of these type extinguishers. A Class C rating, signified by symbols like those pictured here, mean the fire extinguisher can be used on a fire near or involving energized electrical equipment. This designation is typically seen on combination type fire extinguishers that are suitable for use on other types of fire too. Class D rated fire extinguishers will be marked with symbols similar to those pictured here. These extinguishers are intended to be used on fires involving combustible metals that actually burn, such as magnesium, sodium, or potassium. Class K fire extinguishers, which are the newest type on the market, are marked with symbols similar to those pictured here. These specialty extinguishers are designed for use on kitchen fires, specifically those involving deep fryers which contain animal-based oils or fat, as well as vegetable oils. Some fire extinguishers are rated for use on only one class of fire material, such as A, or B, or D. However, most extinguishers are designed for use on two or more classes of fire material. For example, this foam extinguisher is rated for use on fires involving Class A and B fire materials, while this CO2 extinguisher is suitable for use on Class B and C fires. But the most prevalent type extinguisher found in most workplaces are combination ABC extinguishers. These commonly contain a dry powder that smother out a fire, much like you would with a blanket and can be used to extinguish fires involving ordinary combustible materials, flammable liquids, and electrical equipment. So, check the labels of your portable fire extinguishers in your workplace so you will know what type or types of fire they are rated to extinguish. One more thing to consider when you use a portable fire extinguisher is its size. A relatively small portable fire extinguisher like this dry chemical extinguisher designated as a 5ABC will only last about 6 to 10 seconds before empty. A larger extinguisher like a 20ABC will last somewhere around 25 to 35 seconds before it is emptied. While that is certainly a longer time, most people are surprised at how fast even a large fire extinguisher can be completely emptied. There are four basic steps to use most portable fire extinguishers. However, people often panic when they see a fire and forget exactly what to do. To help you remember the four basic steps of fire extinguisher use, just remember P-A-S-S, -S, or PASS. The P stands for pull the pin. Stand several feet back from the fire while holding the extinguisher in one hand and then insert your finger into the round end of the retainer pin and firmly pull. And don't worry, the thin plastic band that holds the retainer pin in place on most extinguishers will break relatively easy. The second step is to aim the nozzle or discharge hose at the base of the fire. The idea is to apply the fire extinguishing media towards the material that is burning and not at the flames that may be leaping up high. Step three is to squeeze the handle to discharge the fire extinguisher. If you let go of the handle, the discharge will stop, and if you squeeze it again, it will resume. The fourth and final step is to sweep from side to side as you slowly approach the fire. This allows you to cover all of the burning material and not just that located at the center of the fire. In review, the four steps of the PASS method are pull the pin out of the handle, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep from side to side. 
Here are some important things to keep in mind in case you are going to try and extinguish a fire. The first is to never get yourself in a position where you could be trapped should the fire spread. Always maintain a clear path away to the nearest exit or other safe area and evacuate immediately if the flames, heat, or smoke seem to be getting out of control. And once you have extinguished the fire, keep an eye out for flare-ups. Sometimes the fire continues to smolder beneath the burnt debris and it is not uncommon for a fire to reignite several minutes later. Fire extinguishing media such as water or foam can collect on the floor around a fire and cause you to slip, as can ash or liquids from containers that might have burst during a fire. So don't run, just walk in a controlled manner so you don't slip and fall. Also keep an eye out for any boxes, pallets, or other materials that are placed on shelves or stacked near the fire area as they could become unstable from fire damage and fall over on you. And always turn in any extinguisher that has had its pin pulled out of the handle to be checked. Even if you did not squeeze the handle, you may have broken the internal seal that maintains the pressure inside of the extinguisher. So play it safe and get it checked out. So in review, take some time to familiarize yourself with the types and sizes of portable fire extinguishers around your workplace as well as any you may have at home or in your vehicles. And if you do discover a fire and are going to try to extinguish it, notify someone else about the fire and then remember pass, pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. These are the four basic steps to use a portable fire extinguisher. Also, keep in mind the importance of maintaining awareness of your surroundings so you don't become trapped or injured while attempting to extinguish a fire. Finally, never attempt to use a fire extinguisher if you are not comfortable doing so. Instead, you should evacuate immediately and go to a safe area in accordance with your organization's emergency action plan. If you have any questions at all about the use of a portable fire extinguisher, please talk to your safety representative or supervisor at work. You can also contact the safety professionals at OSHA Training Services. Hey.